Which you guys got another video. Should you build a computer with AI suggestions? You can see here on Newegg, they have a new feature, which is called build with AI. You will give it some instructions and it will search for parts on its website for you to then buy, and then you can build your PC. So let's have a look at how good this beta build with AI feature is on Newegg. Now you can see here, I've put 7700X, which is for a Ryzen processor, and it's gone ahead and picked me a popular customer picks and also suggested picks. It seems everything has gone AI crazy and now we're allowing it to pick our computer parts. Now I'm not completely convinced that this is gonna be a success. We do have a cheap branded uh, NVMe drive here, which is picked. And we also have, I can see on there, the RX 550 graphics card, which isn't a great graphics card. It's gone ahead and chose a Corsair 4000D Airflow which is a very nice case uh, for the actual build itself. Now, does it know anything about color, i.e. what color you want, whether you want a white case, a black case, whether you want a glass, glass side panel, or any of this stuff, it's not gonna know any of that unless you probably tell it. Now, again, moving on down, it's give us a 1200 watt power supply for an RX 550, which I don't think has any sort of power requirements to plug into. So why would you need a 1200 watt power supply for this particular build? So there is the first error that I can see right there with the selection it's chose here. So let's have a quick look at the graphics card here. And you can see this is the graphics card that's chose for us. It's an RX 550 and uh, it's not a bad card and it's not a great card. It's just a, a, a cheap budget graphics card that you can use for a system. So it's not got any sort of power input as far as I can see here. So why would you need a 1200 watt power supply for this build? You're just overpaying. And who would know whether you would need even this lower end graphics card? So you would have to sort of determine how you're doing your searching. The cooler that is used here, I can see is the SAMA CU CPU cooler here. And moving on to the customer picks here, you can see it's chose a different case but it's pretty much chose exactly the same parts for this. It's give us a cheap uh, a cooler here for the actual build itself. Now I'm pretty sure that this cooler is not gonna be good enough for a 7700X because those processors run super hot. So I'm not sure that was a great cooler to choose for that particular CPU. And also it's white with a black case. And on the other side, we do have a white case with a white cooler. So moving on to the other side here, you can see the, the actual motherboard they've chose here is quite a nice motherboard. Uh, so it's pretty decent motherboard here. What I have noticed with this particular AI is how it selects parts. And I will show you a little bit later on how it's chose parts for someone and they've actually built it and uh, sent it into a computer repair shop, a friend of mine who lives in America. And uh, basically uh, it's a complete shambles. And that's because of the parts that it's chose for them. So we've got a micro ATX motherboard here. Again, it has no clue of how many fans you want to use and how many fan headers you're going to need. But we've got a micro ATX board here. And then we've also got an RTX 4070 uh, Ti that is chose here. It's also given us 32 gigabytes of RAM and a Samsung drive here. And it's given us this cheap case. I just don't understand with a perspex size on this actual case. Now this has got a DVD-ROM base in it, which means you're gonna need a DVD-ROM drive to put in there, otherwise why would you choose this case? Again, perspex side, no glass, and we don't have any sign of any DVD-ROM drive uh, being selected, but it's also chucked in a 750 watt E fully modular power supply. And that for a 4070 Ti is pretty much on the limit. It's not giving you any sort of headroom uh, for uh, sort of power reserve. So I'd say at least an 850 watt there. So it will run, but it would be better with a little bit more power. But as you can see, that's what is chose here for this particular build. Again, hasn't given us a great case choice, but it has given us a full selection of build. Now, if you went on this uh, suggested build here, it's also given this cooler, and I checked quickly the specifications for this, and I think there's like a five mil gap, if that, 
from the cooler to the actual Perspex side panel. And again, it's a pretty big cooler as well. And you could run into issues like uh, RAM problems and things like that. The AI is not going to know exactly any of these issues that you could run into. Now, this is the video from Tim. And uh, this was the parts that it chose for this person who bought them. And you can see all the fans here. And that he's got an ITX motherboard in a full tower case here. And literally, that's the parts it's chose. And it's chose a big uh, cooler here. It's put the cooler down there. Now, granted, the person who's built this has put things in the wrong place, but he can't get things in certain areas of this case. But you can see it's got a small ITX motherboard here, which doesn't even have enough fan headers on it to do all the fans. So you have to bear in mind when you're picking uh, parts like that, and I'll leave a link for his channel in the video description so you can watch the full video. And that person used this method to choose all of his parts. So let's go ahead and choose another CPU here and see what it comes up with here to see if we can try to replicate some of the mistakes that happened to that gentleman. So you can see the selection here that it's chose. Now these are pretty hefty systems, around about $2,000. $1,600 and roughly $1,700 for these particular types of builds. And if you look here, we do have the same old usual suspects, RX 550, 1200 watt power supply. It's also give us some other things here, but this is quite a beefy uh, CPU and uh, it's a $571 CPU here. We do have a $217 uh, ATX motherboard here. Let's give us an RTX. 550 with another 1200 watt power supply which is plenty overkill for that and also it's given us a 280 millimeter radiator more worryingly on this side here i can also see it selected a itx motherboard and this is exactly what happened to that gentleman it selected an itx motherboard with a full tower case which is absolutely ridiculous and if we look down on that list there you can see it's chosen the Fantex full tower computer case and that's a huge case it really is for an itx motherboard it's just completely wrong and this is the problem we've also been selected a 6500 xt 32 gigabytes of ram and again that um, unknown branded uh, drive there and i also have the 1200 watt power supply and you can also see the corsair iq link h170i which is a 420 millimeter uh, all-in-one radiator there. You can see that's what that selected for this particular build. And that is a big radiator for this particular case. And again, choosing things like that, you need to be 100% sure that it's going to fit because sometimes you need to check the dimensions to make sure all of these parts fit. But again, it's, it's not the fact that we're taking a risk with the radiator, which is a 420 millimeter radiator. To fit in there it's also got an itx motherboard and it's got a load of fan slots on that full atx case how are you going to fit all of those fans in there when it doesn't even give you a fan hub and when you're going to have all those fan headers to be uh, populated in there and there's only one fan header on that board so you can see you're going to run into a lot of problems so on the suggested side of things as well we can see we also have some selections here that it's chose for us Again, it's chose a 360 mil rad here uh, for that side of things. Pretty big radiator, and you need to make sure that it's going to fit in those cases. It has chose a Antec uh, Dark League case, and that does allow us to put, you know, a long radiator in the front there. But again, you need to make sure you check all of these measurements before you do any of this sort of stuff, because you're allowing... Uh, the AI to choose this for you. And again, you're not going to be able to finish that build with what they've got there because you won't be able to put all the fans. There's no fans chosen and there's no uh, fan hub and things like that. And they've given you a small ITX bumper board uh, with a large full ATX case. It's not a really good choice. And that's exactly what that person did. And then he added it to cart and then bought it. And of course, it didn't have the right parts. So let's take a look at the 7800X3D. And here is some of the specifications it's chosen for us. And you can see some of them are not too bad. Uh, it does keep chucking in some random components here, which you have to sort of be careful of. This one is a Ryzen 7 7800X3D. 
It's also give us another mini ITX motherboard selection here, which you can see. Uh, and it's also given us a 4070 Ti with a Fractal Design North ATX case, which is a micro ATX case, uh, and also given us there the EVGA Supernova 1300 GT, a 1300 watt power supply for this particular build. And uh, that is a beefy power supply for, for what they've chosen there. And again, it's chosen as the deep cool 360 millimeter high performance uh, radiator all in one liquid cooler there with a small case, micro ATX case, and it's whether it's going to fit in there uh, is another thing you need to check. And you can see it does support GPUs up to 300 millimeters with 360 millimeter front radiator right there. And the graphics card they've chosen is 308 millimeters in length, which means you have not going to get that card in there with the front 360 mil radiator that they have chosen for this particular build. So that graphics card will not fit in this uh, case with the parts they've chosen. Uh, once you put that 360 mil rad in the front, you're only going to have 300 mil space, and the card they're using is a 308 millimeter graphics card. And I'm just going by the information they're giving here, and also I've just cross referenced that and checked the website. For that GPU's length and it just tells you all the information on there. Now let's do a i9 14900K which is a brand new processor that's just been released from Intel and we can see what sort of specifications that it's going to recommend us and straight away I can see Core i9 14900K it's offering us the motherboard a thousand dollar motherboard which is an EATX motherboard which is a pretty expensive and big motherboard Moving on down, we've got an RX 7900 uh, XTX uh, graphics card here. And I can already see it's given us the Fractal Design Pop Air XL. Now, that is also an ATX case, not an EATX case. So there might be a problem with that motherboard fitting in that case. So, you know, this is where you've got to be careful when you're ordering parts of this magnitude. Uh, you need a bit of common sense to work all this stuff out. Otherwise, you're going to end up buying parts that don't fit into certain cases or having parts that are just way overpowered, uh, you know, like RX 550s with 1200 watt power supplies, which is just a waste of money. So you have to work all this out yourself, generally, and you're allowing AI to do all this for you. And this can be a costly uh, mistake, you know, because a thousand dollar motherboard uh, it doesn't fit into a case that might not fit into that actual case. This is the actual uh, Pop XL. It is the bigger type of case, but it's whether it supports EATX. And it does say accommodates EATX motherboards up to 280 millimeters. But the motherboard they've chose is 305 millimeters, which means it's not going to fit in that case. And that's where the problem lies. And you can do the searching for these particular types of boards let me just quickly show you it's pretty easy to cross reference this and you can check on their manufacturer's website and it says 30.5 centimeters which is 305 millimeters and again same with the graphics card we did in the previous one you can see 308 millimeters in length and that is a pretty costly mistake because if you're buying a thousand dollar motherboard and uh, it's not fitting inside the case that's going to be a major headache for you and you may be thinking, what about budget systems? Well, let's do a quick budget system. We can wrap this one up. An i3 1300-100F. You can see here it's selected some parts for us. And these are the parts it's chosen. It's chosen another ITX motherboard here and a 3060 RTX uh, card here. It's given us some 16 gigabytes of RAM and also given us 750 watts of power. And you can already see there, it's given you... Uh, some selection of fractal design that cheap budget case again uh, there as well on this side of things we do have a 4070 ti with an i3 13100f with an itx motherboard i mean what sort of combination is that that is a really bad combination and that is not what you're after when you're building pcs and then to top it all it's chucked it in a corsair 4000d case which is absolutely comical it's an ATX uh, mid tower case, but it's just not the right parts that you would choose for that particular type of build. And this is exactly what happened to that bloke. 
who bought their PC from this particular site. He went ahead and added it to the cart and bought it all and tried to put it together. And of course, it turned into a nightmare for him. And now it's he's left with a PC that is not functional. Now, in very small print up the very top, it does say I'm AI in beta stages and uh, some results may vary. So these results do vary quite a bit. And again, I would not be advising people use this method, especially if they're looking to build a computer this Christmas for maybe their children or something like that or for themselves. I would not use this method to pick your parts. You're going to end up with egg on your face and you can end up spending a lot of money on parts that don't fit into certain cases or buying parts that are just overkill for what you're having in that particular build. So be very careful. And you can end up with bottlenecks and things like that with 4070 Ti's with an i3 uh, processor in there. It's not going to be great. So again, if you're looking to do this sort of thing, ask someone who's got a bit of experience in picking PC parts uh, for you and help you rather than using a PC Builder on Newegg's website. Now, this is not to tarnish Newegg's reputation or anything like that. This is just to bring awareness of the brand new PC Builder tool, which is built with AI and what you need to look out for. It is in beta and they are clear to say that some results may vary. Just be very careful if you're using this particular method to pick your PC parts. There is plenty of other people out there that can help you choose the right parts for the right build at the right sort of budget that you have rather than using AI to choose these parts for you. And they can end up with a big case with a small motherboard and things like that it can be quite disappointing. So just be careful if you are looking to build yourself a PC this year and do not use anything like that just yet until uh, the AI uh, gets a lot better at choosing parts and understands the differences with uh, graphics card sizes, radiator sizes, case sizes, and motherboard sizes, and also how much power is needed. Once the AI starts to learn all this sort of stuff, it might be a lot better in the future. But until then, I would just give it a bit of a wide berth. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. So I hope this video has been some sort of uh, useful information for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.